Hey, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Lee. This Hi, is Lee. King from Pink Cap. Hello, hello. Hi, Lee. Oh. Hey, hey, guess what? It's still it's still the first cup of coffee for me. So <laughs> thank you so much for you know switching the time for us. It's pretty good for you. And <laughs> but, um, no, actually, honestly, uh it, it's uh really horrible of me to even suggest that because it it's 10 a.m in my time zone so uh, it just right. happens that i got a really late start to the day that's all oh oh it's 10 a.m and that's not so bad <laughs> right yeah yeah no uh, it's my last beer of, of my day yeah last beer. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm one. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm first coffee in. Your your last beer down. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> everyone is. Uh, everyone is sheltering in place. I'm, I've been. I've been holed up in my little office here for like a couple months now. Well, <laughs> yes. Oh man. Your place looks nice. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, thanks. No, I, um, I think it depends on your perspective because. The, yeah. the those are vines that are kind of growing over the outside of our um i'm i'm in a pool house uh and uh, on one hand it's really nice and kind of pretty on, on the other hand um the vines make it such that squirrels can quickly climb up the side of the house and get on the on the roof yeah so cool i guess you pay for the beauty <laughs> Everything we do for beauty. <laughs> yeah, or or in my case, some things that we I don't do. <laughs> it's just not going to happen on on beautiful things for me. Okay, good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh on the coffee for about a minute. And that'll give folks like Ken and, and Nikolai and others to join. So I, I've invited a couple of others. Hey, Lee, Ken too. Very good. I'm going to go on mute for a second, refresh this coffee, I'll be right back. Sure, okay. Sure.
Oh, very good. Okay. All right. Mr. Owens is here. Miss Perrin, uh, who I think it's probably most appropriate to say Miss Scar Scarvada Perrin. Perrin. Hello, just Amy. Come on. Um, I am bouncing between both this meeting and uh, the SIG meeting, but if you need me, please ping me. Uh, sorry, the um, uh, other network meeting. Contributor Pardon. or uh, runtime. Runtime. It's runtime. Good morning. Morning. Hi, Amy. Morning, Amy. Nice to see you. Hey, all. Good morning. Okay. Very good. Uh, we're uh, four minutes after. We've got a few uh, folks, which is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and, and put a link to the meeting minutes inside of our chat, and then we'll, we'll share those. Get the agenda kicked off. It's our meeting minutes. Uh, and uh, if you would, um, all that can reach the meeting minutes, um, go ahead and oh, catalog your um, attendance. It'd be good to. Sure, folks. Ken is is card capitalized? No. It um it is not currently, but you know who knows if that's going to change again. So. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. We have this huge, um, beautiful building in like way out west of St. Louis, and um, it has Mastercard's big logo and name on the on the. Um, probably like a hundred feet huge, right? And they changed the name about a year and a half ago where they, they're, they're not gonna take down that logo and and the small, like the C, a small C for any reason, because I'm not sure how much they spent on that, but it shows a lot of, a lot of MasterCard dollars. The cost of uh, an uppercase or lowercase, that's pretty, that's impressive. Well, okay, uh, a couple of housekeeping items as we get underway here. Um, one is that the, just uh, some of you have been on this call before, some of you have not. Um, for those that, that have not, a bit of familiarity. Uh, so, so this is a, in a, a, you know, this is a CNCF call, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. That this, um, this group is a special interest group focused on things related to networking, um, traffic, uh, network protocols, uh, network services. Um, as such, some of the existing projects that are within the CNCF today um, that sort of uh, fall into this special interest group as their, their home base, their home room, if you will, um, is you know, Linkerd, Envoy, GRPC, NATS, Core DNS. Uh, there's a list uh, that, that I hope I'm not doing a disservice to any of the existing projects, but just um, that general area of focus. Um, and so yep, the, the meeting is open to all um, the general public. Uh, so please, we're gonna have a presentation. Keep in mind here, you know, like, like Ryan was saying, right, is we, we can force certain behaviors. Which I'm not <sighs> okay, so we're gonna have a presentation. I think Ken is maybe talking to someone else. Uh, very good. And so as such, uh, the meeting is recorded and, and is publicly posted on, on YouTube. And so um, don't say anything that your mother wouldn't approve of, I guess. Uh, but uh, good, good to have Nikolai here today. Um, with that, we've got two um, agenda items. If we will get to the second one, irrespective of whether or not someone from the Contour Project is representing, I'm not sure that we have anyone just yet, uh, but the first uh, agenda item up is a project presentation uh, for um, consideration of incorporation into Sandbox. And this is uh, the Chaos, Chaos Mesh project, kind of stewarded by the good folks at PingCap. And so we have some of those, uh, those representatives on the call today. Um, you can... 
I'll go to this Google Doc for, uh, okay, I guess th this is, I hadn't seen this yet, but that's part of the presentation. Actually, so with that, let me introduce a couple of folks that are with the project. So we have uh, Calvin Wang, who's here on the call. Calvin, um, you and, and uh, Ed will be presenting today, is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay, very good. Um, I don't need to further introduce um, the, you guys or the project. Actually, let me, let me stop sharing so that you, can, you guys can take it away, kind of introduce and, and uh, present the project. That would be awesome. very happy to have you. Yeah, sure. I will share my, my screen. Um, okay. Uh, can you see the, see the slides? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ed. Um, I'm the, the co-founder and the CTO of, of Pink Hat. Um, if you haven't heard about us before, uh, we are making the Fort Torrance uh, digital musical database called TidyB. And uh, I think two years ago, we donated the underlying key value storage engine of TidyDB, which is TidyKV to CNCF. And uh, currently, uh, TidyKV is the incubating level project. And we are also the major maintainer of TidyKV. And, uh, and today, I'm, I'm, also, I'm very glad to propose another exciting project, uh, which is Chaos Mesh. Uh, it is our internal Chaos testing framework. Um, and my talk uh, uh, will, have, will have two parts. The first half, I will introduce the, the project itself, including the technical stuff and uh, some detailed information of the, this project. And the second half, I will uh, hand over to Kelvin. Uh, he's our community manager. So uh, he will talk about some community status and the open source governance, things like this, uh, about this project. Uh, and these are some information about me. Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to me via email or, 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 or Twitter. Um, okay. So, okay, uh, first thing first, uh, why chaos engineering is so important. Um, you know, I'm working on distributed system for many years. In the early days, we tend to build a uh, monolithic backhand service like uh, the, the singles, uh, monolithic service because the scale was not a problem and uh, I think the online business is was so simple at the time but I think in recent years uh, the idea of microservice is becoming you know more and more popular and uh, from the perspective of a distributed system engineer uh, writing tests like unit tests for the distributed system is really hard uh, because I think the runtime status of a uh, distributed system, it depends on so many things, uh, like network status, uh, message order, uh, system topology, uh, things like this. So that means we build the, the state of the distributed system to write the unit test is, or, or I, I, the deterministic test is uh, impossible, I think. Uh, it's not very hard to get it. And I think another big trend is uh, Kubernetes is, uh, is winning, uh, have, have already won, and uh, Kubernetes is eating the world. It is so easy to build, you know, distributed system on top of Kubernetes. Uh, sometimes you just, you know, write some uh, YAML file and uh, uh, the Kubernetes will, will handle the deployment, failover, orchestration, uh, things like this for you. And re it, it really lowered the bar for, for developers to build the, the com complicated system. But I think it, it is good uh, in a good way, yeah. And before I, uh, I, I talk about the Chaos Mesh, I want to share a little bit of the, the history of, of, of this, this project. Um, before I even created Pink Hub, I, I watched a video from, in from uh, Foundation DB. I, I think some of, some of, some of you may, may heard this uh, project before. Uh, they, they are talking about a, a testing called simulation testing. Uh, at that time, we don't even have a chaos engineering uh, uh, at that time. And uh, it is two, uh, 2014, and this is a great talk and very insightful. I suggest uh, every of you have, if you 
uh, interested in health engineering or the simu uh, simulating test, uh, you can you can watch that that video. Uh, the the core idea is that to use the simulator to you know intentionally create failure and see if your system can uh, handle them well. Uh, until that, I still think uh, this is the only way to test the robustness of the distributed system. So I mean, uh, maybe some of you uh, watch the show Silicon Valley. Uh, maybe the chaos engineering they help Richard. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, under, under this idea, uh, there are actually a lot of open source softwares, uh, but I think all these tools are separated from each other and uh, their goals are totally different. For example, the Jepson is, uh, you know, uh, the most famous one, and, uh, but Jepson is more, care, uh, more focused about checking the consistency or correctness of a transactional system like a database, things like this. Uh, by the way, we have an official uh, 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 Jepson test report. And another interesting, uh, interesting project, uh, the, the name of this project is Namazu. Uh, but Namazu is more focused on messing up the, the runtime layer, like the file system, like uh, system uh, Linux kernel, like JVM, um, things like this. But most of these tools are not very easy to use. And you have to be an expert of basically everything to, to just make them work. Uh, it is really painful, believe me. And I think there is no such a framework to chain up all these separated tools and expose a human readable, programmable, user-friendly interface to, to the de developer or the, the QA engineer to manage the different kinds of failure and apply to your test workload or your, your in-production workload. And another big challenge is Kubernetes and the container itself. For example, in PinCap, um, our internal testing environment is all based on a super large Kubernetes uh, deployment. And uh, we have different type of tests and the different versions of our database. Uh, that means we will have multiple cluster, multiple deploy, de de deployment, uh, multiple services in a super huge single Kubernetes. And you know, PyDB is a distributed database and, and it has many different components, uh, naming many different parts. So we want to simulate as many kinds of failure as possible in our tests. And I, I have a, just like this uh, example here, if we did it by hand, uh, like in the old days, we just did it by hand. Uh, manually queue the pods, change the IP table. Um, yeah, I think it is good because you know, the code is like really going to be done in this space. Um, that would be a good idea. And uh, uh, what's even worse, uh, some tools are not even work well uh, in, inside the container, uh, like TC, uh, the, the traffic control, uh, the, this tool, and the IP table field species like this. Um, we also have to make sure the, the, the pods in the same, within the same physical nodes will not uh, affected by each other when we apply some uh, uh, chaos tests. So um, here's chaos mesh, the, the background. Uh, the, the, the predecessor of uh, Chaos Mesh was our internal uh, database testing framework. It has a pretty cool name. We call it Schrodinger. Um, but but this project is tightly coupled to you know TidyB's code code base. But we, we saw the potential of of this platform and this project and decide to extract the the, the Chaos engineering part uh, into a more general more independent project, which is uh, Chaos Mesh. And we start this work at, uh, I think, uh, September last year and open source it by the end of last year. Uh, so far, uh, we just open source the Chaos Mesh like for four months. Um, and we have uh, already migrated all our legacy 
uh, chaos test uh, on from our old platform to the to the chaos mesh. So uh, we are the the first adapter of uh, of chaos mesh. I think. I would say the the best part of uh, chaos mesh, uh, it is a one stop solution and it is so easy to use. Um, let's let's let, let's see how 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 easy it is. Um, we, we will use Istio uh, as an example. Uh, you know, uh, Istio is a popular service mesh framework. Uh, everyone knows uh, Istio. And uh, let's say we want to inject some chaos into its control panel or, or, or control plane or, 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 or data, data plane to observe the, the performance or stability uh, or security or anything you want to confirm. Uh, let's see how, how, how we do this. For example, you have a, 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 a Istio uh, cluster uh, deployed in your Kubernetes. Um, just two steps. And all you need is just to write a YAML file like this, uh, define uh, what kind of action you want to inject to your, to your existing uh, deployment. For example, I, I, will, I will use the pod failure, uh, uh, chaos, uh, and uh, mess up the, the, the Istio cluster. And the first step is use Kuba control, apply this, this YAML file, and uh, you can see the, the, this is the dashboard um, of, of, of the application. You can see the metrics uh, provided by, by Istio. Uh, the metrics are gone during this time. And if you want to stop the, 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 the chaos, you, you just use the Kubernetes delete and uh, you are all set. And the service is alive again. So it's really simple, uh, very easy to use. You don't have to you know, write the codes, you don't have to manually uh, doing anything, yeah. And uh, we can even control the, the direction and uh, frequency of the, the, the different kind of cows. Uh, like here is an example to random, randomly kill the pods uh, every one, one minute. So uh, here's an example we are testing uh, TidyB. Uh, you know, TidyB have a, a self-healing feature. Uh, if you randomly kill the storage node, it will, you know, you have the high availability. So it will uh, be back automatically. Uh, and we can we can just uh, randomly kill, use chaos mesh to make sure our uh, auto failover uh, works. So there are also many uh, uh, scenarios you can you can you can try on um, using using chaos mesh. Okay, okay uh, I will talk about some you know key features and uh, technical design of of. Of Chaos Mesh, um, the first thing is that we follow the cloud native design, and uh, we define our uh, you know the different kind of uh, failure, different kind of uh, chaos wire CRD, and uh, so you can the, the developer or the QA engineer can just use YAML file to to define the the, the chaos experiment, and. Uh, uh, we, all, we, we we use the side card pattern to inject the the the, the cows the, the, the cows pod uh, to your application uh, to your application pod so it is uh, totally transparent to the application layer and uh, another uh, we also besides the the randomly queued pods we we provide many different kind of uh, chaos type like network uh, we are we are in the network sig so we can simulate the, the network delay and uh, lose the network packet uh, dub or the network partition um, things like this because you know we are building the distributed database so we want to make sure uh, the um, we can we can mess up the network so we can see the the, the system still uh, goes well and besides network uh, besides network we we can you know also inject some um, IO error uh, wire uh, fields um, and also we can simulate the 
the, the clock screw. Uh, it is very useful when you are developing a, a, a database uh, or developing the transactional system uh, because we, we use timestamp uh, all the time. So, and uh, another interesting feature, uh, another interesting chaos uh, type is uh, kernel fault. Uh, we, we use eBPF to, to, you know, to, to, to randomly, you know, uh, inject some failure uh, to your syscall. So, um, yeah, it is uh, very interesting. So this is the, the, the architecture, uh, the architecture of, of the, uh, the, the, the Chaos Mesh uh, project. Um, basically, it is, uh, just like I said, it's very, very clear native. Uh, we use the CRD to define the intent, uh, and we use the sidecar to inject uh, specific Chaos to, to the pods, and we create a, a customized controller manager to manage the hosting. Uh, it's, it's really straightforward, yeah. And uh, currently, I think Chaos Mesh is not um, doing enough on uh, observability. Uh, you know, the effects of Chaos test, uh, you know, uh, currently need to be observed through the metrics of the application being tested. So we, we are considering uh, giving the Chaos Mesh its own dashboard to improve the, you know, the, the observability. In addition, um, to make it easier to use, uh, we, are, we are considering a make a service, public service on, on public cloud like GKE or, or, or EKS, so, so that the user don't even need to write the YAML file if you have already deployed your application or microservice on EKS or GKE. Uh, you can click some buttons uh, on our uh, service to, to create some uh, chaos to test your, 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 your application. And uh, the third thing is that uh, is about the automatic validation. Um, automatic validation, what is automatic validation? Uh, you know, we, we inject some uh, chaos to application and the application may, you know, uh, the, the, and, you have to check the, 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 the output uh, of your application to check if your system are going well uh, when you apply the, the, the cows. And uh, we have already implemented uh, automatic uh, validation in our database. Uh, but this, this is very, you know, depend, depends on your, depends on domain knowledge, right? So I can easily write a validator for for my database, but if you have another application, I don't I don't know how to how to uh, how to check your your system behavior when when you inject the, the chaos. So we plan to create the verifier API layer so that the third party application uh, can develop or create their own validator while testing, so that the whole test process can become, can become completely automatic. Yeah. Okay, um, next, I, I, I would like to invite our you know, community manager, uh, Calvin, to talk about the, the community stuff. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, um, thanks, Ed. Um, um, so uh, now let me, uh, let me, Talk about something that is uh, less technical. Um, on the community side, and um, although uh, we've been open source for a few months, uh, we have uh, gained a lot of attention from the community. Um, as you can see, uh, we during the past few months uh, we have uh, received uh, as of now actually we have uh, received uh, one point five key stars on GitHub and. Uh, Actually, if you look at the curve on the right side, you, you will notice that the, the, first, the first thousand stars uh, were actually achieved during the first two weeks after the open sourcing. And now um, we have uh, 27 contributors 
from uh, multiple organizations. Uh, we will talk about talk more about it later. And uh, we have kept a steady pace of commits. Uh, so far, we got two hundred and seventy. I think it's more than that commits uh, in uh, in uh, in total. And uh, we don't we do not have a website yet, but uh, we we are fully aware of the importance of documentation. So we uh, put together our documentation uh, for the community uh, using the GitHub Wiki. And uh, we have a monthly meeting, monthly community meeting in the planning phase. And I think it should be ready soon. Uh, so everybody here with, uh, in, uh, welcome to join the meeting when it's ready. So next slide. Uh, uh, another indication of the recognition and the attention is that uh, actually uh, during the first week of the open source, uh, we, published, we published our introduction article. Uh, it was uh, in, uh, among the uh, top, uh, top titles uh, of Hacker News and also it's ranked the first uh, uh, in the GitHub trending list of the week. Next, yes, we, with uh, this, uh, we are really uh, flattered and humble, humbled about this recognition and uh, attention. And so, with that, we are seeing uh, already seeing uh, increasing adoptions from the community. Uh, as uh, Ed already mentioned, PinCab is the first, and perhaps uh, I think. Uh, it's also the heaviest user of Chaos Mesh, um, and we have other adopters from multiple industries. For example, we have Daily Motion, uh, which is the YouTube in France. We have Celo, um, it's a digital payment solution provider, and the Inspur is uh, a very big cloud compu computing service provider in China, and the Xiaopen Moto is. Uh, a intelligent automobile manufacturer. It's like the Tesla in China. Yeah, we are pretty exciting about that. And uh, the on um, their uh, the contributors are from these adopters. Yeah. So um, here uh, come to the question: Why? Why do we want to? Uh, do not uh, chaos match to CNS, CNCF. I think it's quite ob obvious to us. First of all, um, it's uh, I think the uh, the values and missions of chaos match is in very very good alignment with the CNCF. Uh, as Ed already introduced, uh, chaos match has adopted a very cloud native design so that it could easily. Uh, integrates with the CNCF ecosystem, and uh, it's our uh, in, uh, initial and the primary intention for Chaos Mesh to be uh, serving as a universal Chaos testing platform for the distributed distribu distribu system on Kubernetes, um, so so that it could in enable resilience uh, with observability. I think this also, these two are also the uh, two of the most important qualities of uh, cloud native projects. And also, our ultimate goal is that is that we would like Chaos Mesh to be a, the Chaos, Chaos engineering standards on cloud. Of course, that has to be uh, uh, under the help from CNCF. And uh, as for the benefits to Chaos Mesh itself, I think speaking of a very good experience of Tech EV, uh, which is uh, uh, in the preparation for graduation, uh, I think by joining the CNCF, uh, we could really use the, the guidance and assistance uh, in terms of community governance and the other uh, development aspects of the community. And also uh, CNCF is uh, uh, very well recognized as a neutral home for collaboration for a very young project like 
chaos match. I think uh, only it's the only way. I mean to uh, to collaborate with uh, other uh, cloud native projects. It's the only way for us to you know to to get better together. And yeah, ultimately, yeah, we really would like to help uh, more and more developers. Yeah, with that, we are coming to the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you all. And uh, if you like us, just uh, you know, be our sponsor. Uh, and all, uh, also, uh, our man, uh, the Chaos Mesh uh, maintainers are all here. Do you have any questions? Yes. So basically, we can answer any question about Chaos Mesh. And uh, yeah, yeah. The whole thing is, is all here. Thanks. Uh, great presentation, guys. This is, uh, there were. There were even a few jokes included, which was uh, which was nice. Uh, so kudos on the quick ramp of the project, by the way. The you know uh, your, your marketing team will have to teach me some tricks. That's um, <laughs> the, the numbers are impressive. It's good. Uh, uh, so look, a couple of I'll start with a couple of questions, and I'll invite the community um, as well to, to to ask if if they have any. So. Uh, well, a couple of things. One, I, I might have gotten, um, so I'll say this, and we, we have the majority of the rest of the time of our call to probably um, talk about Chaos Mesh. The second item we had on the agenda um, can be covered, if we don't get to it, we can cover it offline. So I just wanted to do some housekeeping there. Um, Ed, at one point you talked about, you know, uh, you talked about chaos in one container potentially affecting another. And, and I, at the time, I don't know if, if you were sort of setting up and talking about the challenges of doing chaos things, or if you were talking about one of, one of the things that Chaos Mesh as a project was helping solve. Yeah, um, uh, you, you mean this slice, uh, I, I, I'm talking about, uh, uh, you know, yeah. the, the problem is some tools for example, like uh, if you manually change the IP table of your host uh, physical nodes, it may affect all the network of your, you know, the the all the parts in the in the in the in the uh, node. physical node. So, uh, if we want to simulate the 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 network or um, uh, simulate Simulate ne ne network partition or 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 mess up your your network for a specific part, uh, but not other parts in the in the within within say physical node. So you have to, uh, you you don't you don't, uh you cannot use the 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 IP table directly. So, um, makes yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's sort of the level of granularity of chaos in the past. Yeah. Uh, think chaos monkey that had been. A bit more focused in IaaS or VM land. Didn't really. Um, a couple of things. One, one of the slides that I was hoping for, I was hoping we might have a slide on. Well, that, that would just, I know this is a, a bit of a difficult one or can be, but it would be discussing um, other projects um, and kind of contrasting them, th things like, like Litmus Chaos um, or, or others. Um, do you, how do how do you, how do you guys characterize that? You you, you mean the competitor or the, the same yeah. the other other other? I think um, from my own perspective or my as far as I know, Chaos Mesh provide the um, uh, sorry, it was, uh, the most comprehensive. Yeah, the most comprehensive uh, uh, chaos different kind of types chaos types. For example, the, the kernel, the network, the the the, the, the system clock. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the uh, advantage of Chaos Mesh is the com comprehensive uh, types of Chaos. That's it. Yes, yeah, for Litmus Chaos in particular, they um, maybe an appetite larger than the actual experiments that they have today, but sort of the notion that there's a Chaos Hub sort of indicates that or would hint that that um, there would be a healthy set of experiments. I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case today. They, they do have experiments for um, 
you know, in, in a speaking with my the SIG uh, network hat on the, the experiment you guys use as, as examples that you have support for today um, are in large part why it is that you're you're we're we're, at, we're doing this presentation with SIG because they're they're network centric and, and even like the service mesh examples are, are uh, I'll be very biased and say those are a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I guess the broader question here is around uh, uh, how it is that people design um, new experiments, uh, those that maybe are more network centric. Um, what's the, you talked about a validator framework. Oh, API. Yeah. You're, you're on the, 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 the verifier API. You, you, how, do, how, many, how many engineers working on this or how? Well, how does one bring a new experiment? How does one bring a new piece oh. of chaos? Oh, yeah. Um, I think this, this, this question I will hand over to Zhou Chang. Can you, can you introduce? Um, I think the, the, the question is about how, uh, how hard is it to introduce a new kind of chaos? Uh, is, is that? Yeah. If I can amend the question, Lee, and that just just a quick amendment. So, uh, uh, speaking from networking uh, point of view, do we have any predefined templates or recipes that actually people can reuse to extend, you know, the the, the types of networking chaos that you can introduce? Yeah. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I think the signal, some signal, no problem. I cannot hear the the, the question. Yeah. Now. I'll, I'll... Uh, you didn't uh, hear me. Uh yeah. I I, I miss most of. Okay. Okay. The... okay. <laughs> Let me try again. So I wanted to amend uh, Lee's question mm. and wanted to ask: um, Are there any existing recipes or team? templates that people can actually use to extend uh, and build their new and introduce new networking, you know, chaos types on top of what already exists? Um, yeah, actually, I think, I think Crayley posted a, a link um, uh, of how, to, how you, you know, create uh, the first chaos experiment your, your, for your existing application. And if you want to create a new kinds of new kind of uh, chaos failure, uh, like uh, you create a new 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 a new type of network partition or something things like this, you have to. I think we don't have a, a API layer to to help you to create a new kind of uh, chaos uh, easily. But um, it's pretty. It, it, I would say it is uh, very easy to. Uh, apply existing cows to your uh, your application. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have we don't have a very uh, a manual or document to 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 help you easily to create a new type of uh, cows. But you can use existing cows yeah, to create the uh, cre create the experiment uh, just using the the YAML file. So we have a document about this. And, and uh, I'm Zhou Chang, I'm the maintainer, yes. Uh, now we have um, a document about uh, how to add a new type of chaos into the uh, chaos mesh. And now we already have uh, almost uh, two or three types of, type of chaos uh, introduced by contributor. And uh, it, uh, it's uh, not very hard to, uh, in, to add a new chaos type of chaos to chaos match. Yeah, ah, cool. Okay. Yeah, good question. It is a, an important consideration. Like, how, yeah, you know, to, in order to kind of achieve add part of what your response to the, how you contrast against something like litmus chaos in terms of like, hey, having a more diverse set of, uh, more that um, an SDK had or a, a framework or, or, or whatever API it is. layer or some, you know, the API, the modules, SDK to create a new kind of, yeah. Thinking of the context and, and understanding that the project is, you know, primarily written in Go 
is there a requirement that that new K that uh, that chaos be written in Go? Um, not all of it. Um, you know, I, I I would say Zhou Chang can answer this question. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Tade. Uh, um, it's all the uh, most of the chaos uh, uh, using a uh, created by Go, Golang. I, I I don't think so. I, I think we we use some you know eBPF. It is for this you know C plus uh, C. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, we can write some like a C program and uh, others. Uh, the time chaos is you uh, use P. P trace and uh, the kernel is use BPF. Yeah, so I, I would say it is 50-50. Um, I think because you know so, sometimes you want to mess up the, the kernel things, you have to write the, the eBPF or using some you know a P trace to 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 um, you know uh, do the, uh, to create the, the, the clock screw. Yeah, so yeah. Hi hi. Ali, uh, this is Quinny from PinkApp. I'm also a community manager. So I want to uh, chime in regarding how we differentiate ourselves from other Kios engineering projects. Uh, we didn't include this in this slide because uh, we do not want uh, to, you know, compare to be so competitive. And, but we do have some um, information in place and I would like to introduce them if you um, if you think that's okay, I, I do. Uh, I think the people will, as you presented. Um, I guess I would say that everyone should take it with a grain of salt, as it's just a perspective on uh, from your internal perspective. How yes. it is? Yeah, that what, that's what I mean. Yes, uh, just uh, because we are speaking from our perspective and uh, might not be so objective. So yeah please just um let me give some uh, illustration about the difference so basically uh kiosmash provides rigor and fine-grained injection capabilities and is more optimized for complex applications such as providing network partitioning file system io interference time interference uh, kernel injection etc these are very important uh, for testing complex distributed systems and um, so chaos match injection capability is completely provided by itself, which can be controlled independently. Litmus itself does not provide many chaos capabilities so far. Some injection capabilities need to rely on other chaos tools, such as network delay and Pomba. Pomba, sorry. And uh, another point is that chaos match is more cost effective cost efficient and easier to use. Creating a Kios experiment in Kios Mash only needs one YAML file, and there are only a few fields that need to be set for users. Um, it also provides a flexible application selector. For Litmus, a Kios requires two configuration files. Uh, one is rbsc.yaml and uh, experiment.yaml. Experiment Many of the configurations and uh, comp are complicated. Uh, so part of the reason is that their Kios implementation relies on creating jobs in the corresponding namespace. In addition, Kios Mash will also provide a way of front end management of experiments in the future. So, Kios Mash uh, provides Kios dashboard, will provide um, the dashboard a combination of Kios events and application monitoring, which will make it easier to observe the effects of uh, Kios experiments. Uh, currently only supported for TidyB, but a universal version will be available soon. So, um, so the last point is that Kios Mesh and Litmus architectures are very different. So Kios Mesh deploys a daemon set on each node. This architecture can do more things, we believe, such as supporting richer network injection capabilities, kernel injection capabilities, etc. I hope that um, that's, again, that's from our perspective and to just take it with, um, with uh, some sort of grain, yeah.
Thank, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for that. Yeah, that's about as much as we could ask for, I think, in terms of um, a couple other quick questions on high level. I know that we, um, since we had the time, we got a chance to ask a bit more about the workings of the project, but just um, some around the project um, quickly. So Kubernetes native, but Kubernetes only? Is that, that would be an accurate statement? Uh, for now, I think it's Kubernetes only. And uh, no, no Windows support currently? I, I don't think so. Okay. And in the future, is there an app, is there a plan for Windows support? Um, not, no, no, not as far as I, I can see. Uh, I, I don't, I don't have a plan for, for Windows for now. Yeah. No plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Uh, last one for, for me. Um, yeah, because we, we, we rely on so many, you know, features or, or, or uh, you know, uh, provided by, by Linux kernel. So it is, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's really hard to apply them on, on the Windows uh, part. Yeah. Um, I think last one for me, the yeah. as a service, is the vision there that that's a, a sort of a, a, a free public service, or, or, or can you say more there? Yeah, uh, I put the question mark here. So um, I, I, I'm not sure we, we, we will provide, a, um, yeah, we can, we can provide a, a, a service on some, some, some kind of like free, uh, using a freemium uh, model. Uh, maybe we put some advantage cows for some, you know, uh, uh, to to charge uh, to to get some service fee uh, and maybe it is a uh, the business model uh, in, in of of cash mesh in the future uh, maybe got it very good yeah. um, others on the call others have questions for the cast team cast mesh team I do have a quick question slash suggestion. So uh, the way that the architecture was described is that you have a local node, worker node daemon. Have you considered uh, being able to test the infrastructure itself? So I know that this primary is targeting the application, but for example, I would probably like to test my Kube, Kubernetes infrastructure before I start deploying my application so that I know that it scales well, it reacts properly to a missing node or to latencies. Um, I might be wanting to check if my CNI is, you know, performing well. I might want to compare it with another CNI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's an interesting idea. Yeah, maybe we can put some, you know, uh, like a plugin system into our daemon set so that you can, you know, do some extra or extra checked checked. Uh, in the, the demon set, uh, maybe. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Questions from others on the call? Or, or Nicolay, um, more questions? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, Ken had noted that the end user community, just the area, the, you know, the, the chaos engineering and testing as a topic and as a set of tools, probably very interesting to the end user community, so, uh, as indicated by the stars on the projects, probably. Yeah. Um, uh, we did, let me, let me, at this point, maybe harass you guys about this same question again. So I mentioned litmus chaos as like top of mind for me, but there, there are other, there are other projects out there. Um, if you do have characterizations of those, I would be curious to see those. Um, yeah, sure. Um, we can, we can, how can we send it to you? Uh, maybe we can post uh, more information on the um, PR. PR the page, yeah, maybe proposal. In the what do you think, Lee? Uh, yeah, if I, putting myself in your shoes, I would, yeah, I would tread, uh, you know, uh, ping me in. The, I would tread lightly. And uh, the things that you'd said, uh, yeah, the, it's even more. Even if you're a native English speaker, it is easy to offend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure, no problem. We can ha we can come up with a table 
with those uh, items that we we include um, as the features to compare and those um, similar projects in the field. Is that okay? That sounds great. And let me okay. not put all the all the diligence on on you guys. Uh, so I think it's specifically litmus chaos uh, that's also up for proposal. And so let I'll coordinate with the other um, SIG chairs. Uh, mm -hmm. on, there as well that will help so yeah sure thank you very good uh, actually i did have one other question uh, currently i think calvin last time that we spoke um uh did, there weren't any toc supporters as of as of that time did, is that is that still the case today nope uh yeah we, we still need the the sponsors yeah Got yeah it. we need three yeah very good, very good. This, so thank you very much for the presentation. I mean, anyone else have any questions or comments on the call? So uh, uh, what are the next steps? Like we, we need to get sponsors on our own. Oh, uh, and is there any, any advice regarding that? Yeah, the, um, a, a, a couple of things. One is that, that uh, just to have him give, so I appreciate the presentation that uh, Calvin, uh, you and others had given um, earlier, just to get familiar with the project in advance. Um, for my part, I, I have interest here. Um, I, cool. I'm, I'm willing to take up, uh, to perform a SIG review of the project. So, so I just, uh, you know, yeah, uh, the project, like only, only four months in the open source. I do have yeah. questions around the, the diversity of the contributors. You know, the, the governance that's there today, the sort of all of the maintainers are pink cap, cap folks. Um, and that's, uh, that's a, a very organic thing. That's how projects generally get started. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But so Calvin answer your question, kind of a, a SIG review, which a part of that, um, I'll use the word diligence lightly, uh, but part of that examination, if you will, will be uh, that, yeah, I, I could, uh, help with a bit uh, the, just this whole process here we will be talking about chaos mesh as a project that we're reviewing and yeah. this in our sig chairs meeting we'll be discussing it with in the presence of other poc members so that they'll they will learn of the project through that i will let them know that and ken will as well let them know that um, the project is looking for toc sponsor and so that'll be a, a, a vehicle for soliciting interest Okay. Outside of the other ways in which you might be soliciting interest. So, so uh, do you suggest, uh, you know, we, we uh, solicit, uh, solicit uh, sponsors or interests uh, on our site? Yeah, I, uh, I'm also a bit tongue-tied here because that process has recently evolved and I don't know that it's entirely solidified. Um, on paper, the process is essentially exactly what you guys are doing, which is um, you come to the appropriate SIG, do a presentation, that SIG raises it up, um, so helps solicit that interest. Um, it's certainly, I don't think that it is, I think now that you've presented here, I don't think that it is inappropriate. Generally, what would happen is we would do a review. I'd say generally, this is a relatively yeah. new process. For review. Um, that review and that sort of a uh, more concise presentation and perspective coming out of the SIG um, is a good artifact for other TOC members to, to quickly look at and gauge their interest, engage their willingness to support. So that, that artifact I think will be helpful um, to you guys. I don't think that it's inappropriate to have those other conversations. You might find that some of the TOC members would say, oh, hey, I haven't heard from the SIG yet. Let, let me let me hear what they have to say or, or hey what did the sig say in they and others of them they'll, they'll be just much more willing to engage directly and have those conversations and and offer sponsorship so so i don't have clear guidance because yeah. okay. it because it happens different ways so um is there any um document that we need to prepare um, on your part, um, no, other than to be, uh, so we will move forward with a, a 
This, this SIG will put together a short document as a review of the project and kind of some recommendations that we might have about the project. In, in there, we may, have, we may have some additional questions and that would be kind of the okay. only other artifact to produce. Otherwise, there, no. Okay. Um, got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is just great. Thank you. Thank you for all your time and your questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Very good. We'll meet in a couple of weeks. We'll talk to you all okay. soon. Sure. Thank talk you. to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day.